<sighs> so, um, the two, three episodes ago, wait, yeah, three episodes ago, we talked about, no, two episodes ago, three episodes, I don't know. <laughs> so we talked about the short films we've made, um, and I just quickly want to plug again the short film that is basically fresh on YouTube uh, called uh, Unseen Nightmares, um, and it's... Danny's acting, so Danny is playing the main role, the lead role, or the only role. Um, and yeah, it's on YouTube now. If you like to check it out, you should. It's fun. Um, got already some views, and people seem to like it. Yep. And yeah, we had a lot of fun doing it. We did. Okay, let's get into the episode. <laughs> Welcome back to a brand new episode of, of Hello this I'm listening. podcast that you listen to. Hello, I'm listening. Um, we are talking today about something that we've actually talked about multiple times on the podcast. Yeah. But we figure it's been a while since we've talked about it, so maybe we can shed some new light on it a little bit, or maybe, you know, if you're new here, you haven't looked at our, like, what do they call the backlog? Backlog. Um, and maybe haven't listened to those ones and also i feel like we just have a different slightly different dynamic of how we talk on the podcast now I mean, than the first few times we talked about it but it's been a while but yeah. but anyways it's we think it's an important topic to talk about so we thought we would yeah. talk about so it. so the again. topic is anxiety yes which you already could figure out from the title of the episode and um just quickly let's just quickly recap um, what experiences we had in, with anxiety and how we stand today, I think. think. Oh, no. Recap, yeah, sure. So I, I had this accident. I don't want to go into it. It's actually today when we record this episode, 28th of January, uh, 13 years mm -hmm. since I lost my fingers on my right hand. And I began a journey of uh, yeah many operations and rehabilitation, shit like that. Uh, long story short, after... I don't know, five years, six years, maybe. Yeah, after the accident, I kind of developed PTSD a little bit, mm. um, coupled with anxiety. And that anxiety manifested itself in like health anxiety things. So being super aware of everything that goes on in my body and uh, symptoms and weird things and experiencing things that I thought like are totally normal, but Mm -hmm. made me feel like I'm dying. So that yep. basically was or is my anxiety yep. story. Yeah. So yours is, I don't know if you said that already, yours is technically called health anxiety. That's what I said, yeah. Okay. Um, my anxiety also probably stems from PTSD, <laughs> um, from uh, sexual assault, but I think I always kind of had some anxiety. Like, I, I mean, I know I had some anxieties, like as a kid growing up and just like the teenage years and all of that, but that was more generalized anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and that shifted for me to what is defined as relationship anxiety. Um, and for me, it was very much, it surfaced as like, I was very insecure about myself, um, especially in my relationship with you. Like I just felt like I wasn't worthy of being loved and you know, anybody else would be better for you than I was. And it led me to this very like deep spiral <laughs> of, I don't know, constantly questioning everything about myself. So it, it was like body dysmorphia, but then also just like feelings of being inadequate and yeah, I don't really know how to describe it. Yeah, yeah, makes it up good. Um, and it already kind of gives away the, or the, if you yourself have not experienced anxiety, then, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, a lot of people have not actively, I think, have anxiety or do weeks. Like being anxious can happen sometimes, I feel mm -hmm. like. But having like an anxiety disorder is completely different. And But I think a lot of people, especially a lot of people our age, I think have I agree. anxiety disorders. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, and so basically what it is, it's an imbalance of 
cortisol and adrenaline. Um, adrenaline. Um, and so the body goes into the fight or flight mode. I mean, or, basically or, when your body's in fight or flight, you're produce, you're overproducing adrenaline because your body's deciding, okay, am I going to fight or am I going to right. run? And yeah. you need adrenaline for both of those yeah. scenarios. And so you, it, it's something uh, I've read actually recently was um, the brain is not designed to make us happy. The brain is designed to to uh, like to survive mm -hmm. or to keep us alive. That's yeah. what is that's what it was to keep us alive, which essentially um, we, especially if the in the Western world where we are not like experiencing active war, mm -hmm. unless you you know live in in. Southeast uh, Israel, Gaza, somewhere, or, or Ukraine, um, then I'm sorry, first of all. Um, and second, uh, if you don't live there, then you don't have to have this survival instinct all the time. So mm -hmm. your body then makes up, or your brain then makes up those scenarios where you go into that mode and you experiencing you experience those symptoms Mm -hmm. And if you have an anxiety disorder, you basically are constantly in that mode. Either or maybe not constantly or, or at least in situations that are not deserving of being in that fight or flight. So you're, you're presented with a situation where you shouldn't be in fight or flight mode, but your body goes into fight or flight mode. You produce way too much mm -hmm. adrenaline. Yeah. And because you're not fighting or fleeing yeah. the situation your body doesn't know what to do with the adrenaline. Yeah. And so yeah. it's that overproduction of adrenaline that makes you feel, yeah. you know, you might have panic attacks because of it because your body yeah. just doesn't know what to do yeah. with all of it. No, but, but what I mean with constantly being in it, uh, um, like as someone who has severe anxiety and who suffered from that shit for a long time, um, my levels were always high. Yeah, no, I, but I would agree a, with that. You know, at some base level, it was tolerable. I still... Yeah. At some point, I would recognize, okay, I'm anxious, mm -hmm. but I wasn't, I was functionable in the sense that um, I wasn't distracted by it as much. I think at some point you get used to a certain level of, right. of anxiousness and then the that it spikes, feels normal. And then the spikes, which can lead to, um, or which can be uh, uh, panic attacks, for example, for some people, then those feel more uh, heavily, or those mm -hmm. are more the, the anxiety attacks, so to say. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, the thing is, I don't want to really go into <clears throat> all the anxiety shit, but like from my perspective, I've mm -hmm. uh, made a YouTube video that sits as a, at, at a couple thousand views and, and a lot of people respond and it's really nice to see that people just sometimes look for other people who go for something similar. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's interesting because if you find peers that describe exactly what you're going through, it takes the edge of all of the sudden yeah. and a lot of people say that with other things for example alcoholism addiction stuff like that you mm -hmm. know you feel like oh you're so, so alone with those urges feelings whatever and then you talk to people in the same sphere and then you see oh shit so many other people deal with the same stuff i have heard that story so many times from people who go to like alcoholics anonymous yeah and so many people that i know who have gone and they come back from the first meeting and they say, I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> they, they're like, I heard, I heard one person's story and then I hear the next person's story and I'm like, this is my story. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, you feel so validated in the fact that like, you're not going through this alone. People can say it to you as much as, as much as, you know, yeah. you can bear to hear, but until you hear somebody else say all of the things that you're feeling and all yeah. of the things where it's like, oh, you're basically living my life. Yeah. And it, it's comforting in a way. That's and I think it also helps you to kind of have hope to be able to like, oh, I can mm -hmm. push through this because I'm not the only person going through it. Yeah. And it's the same with anxiety. And yeah. Um, and I feel like that's the, I, that was the main reason why we talk about it again. Um, so, but my anxiety kind of changed a little bit. So when it really started, it was all about cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember when it started, it was about the stomach, stomach cancer. Mm -hmm for many years actually and then it turned into like uh more um uh what is the, what is the term like ms and, and, mm, and like brain you had some some brain cancer stuff too yeah not brain cancer about. it was more neuro neurological diseases yeah, but that's yeah 
Yeah, but MS had nothing to do with brain cancer. I'm not sure. But um, brain Parkinson's related. brain. Yeah, brain. Yeah. Um, so, and that's how it turned into. And now I'm basically actually pretty good mm -hmm. with that stuff. But um, because a lot of people are, and that's what I hear a lot in when, we, when we talk to other people, and that's how I was too it. When I feel like you, when you at some point experience anxiety and when you have anxiety disorder, it's not something you can get rid of. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, and I I say that with like very or my most most um, um, op optimistic way I can say it. Mm -hmm. um, but you learn to deal with it, and you learn to to maybe use it, and to just. I mean, you, you know, also learn to it. recognize it before it gets right. to a point like. You, it doesn't mean that you have to live with it constantly being horrible. Right. It's just more you learn how to manage it and you learn triggers and yeah. you learn, yeah. okay, these are things I need to stay away from or these are things I need to go more towards or things I need to, okay, when I start to feel this sensation, I need to do X, Y, and yeah. Z yeah. to prevent it from getting worse. Yeah, it's it's a very tedious, long process and it can it take years um and there are a lot of tools and obviously a lot of like therapy can help a lot cbt um stuff like that uh which can give CBT you cbt is cognitive behavioral yeah, therapy for yeah. those who don't which can give you a lot of tools and and just rewire the brain mm -hmm. to recognize those thought patterns that, that basically put you in that fight or flight mode that was my favorite term when like going through the thick of the anxiety stuff was rewiring the brain. Mm -hmm. Because for me, I've always been more of like, a, I need to be able to imagine, like picture things, like how they work in my body for me to feel at ease, it, like with everything. So if it's a bone break, if it was the fertility treatments, if it was anxiety, it was for me like to understand the the science behind it is helpful because these are all things you can't see. You know, yeah. you can't see the things happening in your brain. You can't see anxiety, like yeah. what it's doing. So it's, for me, it was always helpful to know like what it was doing. Yeah. And the whole concept of rewiring your brain was so I mean, helpful it's, for me. It's not, it's the thing is, it's not only a, I mean, the, it's, it's a nice concept to, to think about because it's, it's something you can, you know, um, imagine. Mm-hmm. But it's essentially exactly what it is. You, you I mean, you are rewiring. Your yeah, brain you, you're, you're completely stuck in those in those patterns. When A happens, B happens, then mm -hmm. C happens, then A happens again. So it's a circle yeah. that just repeats itself. And the first thing I think is just realizing that you are in that circle. That's I yeah. think that's the first thing that naming is it major. Just naming it, whatever name you want to, you know, mm. talk or this, uh, name it. And then you can move forward and, and either look for treatments, uh, look for therapy, look for, there are a lot of books out there mm -hmm. just to, you know, get uh, an idea of what your anxiety can be or is. And I um, also am the opinion, like I, I feel like that there are anxiety disorders that are more like, that are easier to handle in terms of, um, just being aware of it, reading some self-help books and doing some mm. exercises at home. And there are also anxiety disorders uh, which can completely hog your life mm. in the sense that Although you can't I, even Although I wouldn't necessarily it. narrow it down to the disorder itself. I would just narrow it down to the person because there are, you know, there might be people who have health anxiety who can read something and it puts them at ease, you know? Yeah, like they sure. can read something and be like, oh, okay, like self-help books and stuff. Mm. But then in your case, it was a little different with your health anxiety that stuff, it helped you for a short time or like you went to the doctor and got some tests and it helped you for a short time, but then it came back and so you needed more. Yeah. No. But yeah. Um, just kind of going back to, to naming it, I also think for me what was really, really helpful is naming the type of anxiety that I had. Yeah, because sure. Yeah. there yeah. are so many types of anxiety and a lot of, a lot of times you hear about generalized anxiety and so I was reading everything about generalized anxiety and I was like, yeah, I kind of relate to this, but there are still so many things that I'm feeling that I'm not seeing here. Like I'm not, I don't feel represented in, in reading these things mm -hmm. or because it's not describing what I feel. Yeah. And so I started to kind of just dive into my feelings, like looking up, why do I feel X, Y, Z, mm -hmm. you know, and 
or like what ha- what what kind of anxiety is blah blah blah. And it took a while to figure out the right way to like phrase how I'm feeling yeah. and really put it out there like how do I feel? How can I put that into words? And eventually I stumbled across relationship anxiety and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> like everything I read, I was like, yes, yes, that, yeah. I feel that, yeah. things like exactly. And so I think that also helps to like kind of dive into the types of anxiety and try to relate to one, at least it helped me. I because, mean, every anxiety is different and that there are yeah. overlaps obviously, but yeah. I think i think with naming it the power of looking for help or looking for people who have something similar is much easier because if you type in generalist anxiety you find a lot of people talking about it Mm. but you might not find people who have the same sensations symptoms thoughts which is also different for everybody it doesn't mean that you're going to feel exactly the same things just because you have and I've, i've uh learned that anxiety can make you feel literally anything yep it like with me it's it was very symptom symptomatic based mm. and anxiety can literally come up with any symptoms you think of and make it real and um a lot of people um talk about uh what is the term uh, the medical term um hypochondriac mm-hmm. i don't like this term a lot but um that's also c- technically health anxiety so you think that you're sick and you run to the doctor a lot and you you know, say, oh shit, I have heart palpitations, I have uh, something that's going on, I'm going to die and blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in the end, all the tests come back negative, thank thank God. And you're like, oh, thank God, nothing's wrong. You go home. (laughs) And and a couple hours later, days days later, later, a week later. Right, you are completely back in the cycle. And that alone is a a very big, um, um, yeah, Yeah. red flag and, and is... 100 or 100 but could be anxiety mm. um obviously you should rule out any other possibility of sickness or mm. disease or whatever but yeah and yeah i i believe that the two things are really important when uh, when it comes to anxiety first of all talking about it yep. whatever if if you feel comfortable talking with your parents with your partner with your family with whatever friends or find like or find online support groups. online support groups or go see a therapist or do like an online therapy yeah. session um just talking about it and and being heard and validated can take the edge of a lot mm-hmm. and then again um cbt i think is like the best thing yeah. when it comes to uh anxiety and there are a lot of little things they can do alone at home um they don't take up much time but they make a massive difference mm-hmm. and you can see already like i believe if you do cpt um once twice a day like those little exercises that take up five ten minutes maybe you can see a difference in in like a week or two um yeah. i mean you have to keep up with it i think it's important to yeah, remember yeah, yeah. like once you're and we've talked about this too before but once once you're feeling better that doesn't mean you should stop yeah, your efforts yeah. because Um, sometimes it can happen where, you know, you do something for maybe two weeks and you feel great Mm -hmm. and then it comes back three weeks later Mm -hmm. where you feel like you're getting hit by a brick wall. But I think it's important to remember to keep up with those things and to not have the mindset like I'm cured or it's gone or I'm no longer anxious because it, for me, at least it took at least a year, at least before I got past like the thick of it, like the worst of the worst. And I still have it. I mean, I still, I think especially with mine, like now being pregnant and my body is changing and I, you know, right now, especially just don't feel very (laughs) great in my body. A lot of that stuff came back Mm -hmm. for me within the last few months, like a lot of it. And I've had to kind of like remember how to get through those, those spirals. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important, like you said earlier, to remember that it's it it doesn't really ever go away. No. But when it and when it comes back, sometimes it feels like fuck. I have to do all of that work all over again. Mm-hmm. But in reality, it's more just you need to reset again. Where it's you know it comes back, it feels like the worst thing in the world. Well, like it hits you like a ton of bricks, but you have to remember that you got through it before you can get through it again. Yeah, night comes in waves, and the 
periods where you are free of anxiety or you feel okay or getting longer and longer and the harder it gets when anxiety hits back a little bit. But eventually you learn to deal with that as well and you eventually you learn to see the signs, the patterns mm -hmm. and can already do something. And the best thing would be to live a life where you preemptively or you 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 do something already actively as part of your life yeah to um avoid anxiety attacks mm -hmm. or anxiety or panic attacks or whatever you know if it's yoga or just meditation or just you know avoiding certain foods drinks mm. coffee for example caffeine it yeah, cutting out things. caffeine is so helpful yeah <laughs> and things anxious. like that um everybody is different everybody every body works differently so you have to find something that that helps you that makes you feel good but yeah hey um it's very interesting because the the uh the anxiety video i posted um shortly before we started building so it was 2022 at the beginning of 2022 yeah no 2021 we built no 2022 yeah um really yeah um oh, yeah yeah um so uh, it, it it it's interesting to to just you know people post their stories with anxiety and with health related shit and it's so interesting to see how people suffer sometimes silently and just you know writing it in the comments and just sharing the story and getting a response uh which i always respond obviously um helps them so much and it's so nice to mm -hmm. to see that because um most of the time again they feel completely alone yeah. and all of a sudden they hear things and they're like oh shit i'm not alone i have gone through or i have i'm going through something that other people go through too yeah yeah i mean it's kind of the same with anything i mean any anything that you go through that's difficult it, it always helps you feel better to feel validated in the fact that there are other people who have gone through yeah. it. Whether, you know, like sometimes it's just like your pet died yeah, and you talk about it and then somebody says, oh, I know that feeling because my pet died and it was horrible and yeah. we had to do this and, you know, they really struggled. And it's like you, you talking about anything that's difficult yeah, where you get validated that somebody else has gone through it brings comfort to you so it's you no know, different with things like that with any yeah. health problems yeah. or anxiety yeah. or whatever it might be yeah i also believe that um so going through anxiety and 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 surviving it i don't want to say surviving but that's essentially what it is um and and just getting past it i feel like makes you not only stronger but makes you um in a lot of way a more uh, empathetic mm. um and aware of the world and, and people and how they behave and stuff and i feel like it's a very good it's it's shitty if you go through it and it, it can suck at times like a lot but it's also a, a very uh um like if you really push through it and if you really can work through it it's very re rewarding yeah and also i think provides a lot of knowledge in terms of future problems or or things that you can that you might or will um, face at some point mm. like you know death of somebody or uh, maybe even people who go through the same thing and you can provide some knowledge in that sense and yeah so i it's i always try to nowadays see it as a positive thing yeah and it can also be very uh fueling for creativity mm. yeah. yeah i think it's good to <coughs> sorry to any any hardship in life to see it as a as weird as it sounds, as a blessing in disguise. I hate that phrase, but that's the best phrase I've got. Um, because there's always, there's uh, almost always something good that comes out of it where, you know, it's the same with going through, you know, what you went through with your hand, your accident, or with my assault. I It's not like I look back fondly <laughs> on it, but I'm somehow grateful that it happened. As uh, weird as it really? sounds... Maybe. not the <clears throat> not the act itself but had it not happened so many other things wouldn't have happened so many of the good things wouldn't have happened mm, yeah. because uh, everything i mean we've talked about this too on the podcast where everything happens yeah, for a reason yeah. and, and or at least i think so and so there are no 
I, I think all of those hardships, they always lead to something good if you put the work in. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, if you want to, we link the other anxiety episodes um, where we talk more about health anxiety, just health anxiety and relationship anxiety. So you yep. can, um, if you have not listened to them, you can totally listen to them. And um, yeah. Um, and I hope you're not going through anxiety because it sucks. It does. Um, but if you are, we're here for you. Yeah. You can always reach out to us, yeah. whether on our Instagram, either our personal Instagrams or our, our podcast yeah. one. Yeah. Um, yeah, you could, or I don't know, our website. I think people can reach out yeah. through email that way. You'll find a, a way to reach out. Yeah. But we're, we're always here to, to talk. So yeah. that's it. So subscribe, rate the podcast on Apple and Spotify and share the podcast. If you like what you hear, that would be great. If you know somebody who is suffering from anxiety, just, you know, share the episode and say, Hey, maybe you get some insight. And, um, yeah, uh, you can head over to our Patreon where you can support us actively, which we really appreciate. And that goes directly into producing the podcast. So if you have a, a buck to spare, three come, thirty, come hang out with Joe and come out with Joe. That's it. Mm -hmm. Watch out for deer. <laughs>